Well, we know that homelessness is a serious challenge. There's over 300 or so people experiencing homelessness every day, men, women, uh, children, uh, experiencing homelessness in our cities. Back when I was 18, I just, I tried to get out on my own and started out being homeless, not been on and off the streets ever since. I'm getting to return 35. The last time was my, my husband passed away, he overdosed. And I lost my house, my car, my daughter all in one month. I was working for Denny's, uh, Denny's restaurant, and uh, I was a shift manager on third shift. And after two years, you know, they decided to uh, just close their doors, go out of business. Me and my son, we lived in this truck here. I think probably the cold's the worst because the heat isn't so bad, you know, but you, it's hard to get warm, you know, when you don't have, you know, anything. I was with my mom for a while and um, we, I, I had a lot of academic pressure and that kind of raised a lot of stress and tension in the household and um, things started to escalate really quickly and over time um, it wasn't really safe anymore. Well, we have six core prog programs. Uh, the first one is our day center, uh, which is a place where people come and, and can work with caseworkers, can get uh, basic security, basic safety, support for themselves, showers, laundry, restrooms, uh, storage, all, all the kinds of mail, all the kinds of basics that people need. That's called the Shalom Center. Then we have um, Phil's Kitchen, which is our hunger relief program where we serve lunch and breakfast Monday through Friday, five days a week. I don't think anybody realizes until you actually have nothing how nice it is to actually take a shower. Like it's, it's like, oh my gosh, and you just wanna be in there forever, but you know, you gotta take your turn. <laughs> but I mean, showers, laundry, I mean, everything's here. You can get your mail. Um, they have all kinds of supplies, medicine, you know, vitamins, clothes, you know, whatever you need. And a case, the caseworkers can pretty much get anything, you know, done or at least help you figure out how to get it done. So, I mean, I owe them a lot. And the food here is, is unbelievably good. The chef here is, is, even if there's maybe been better, he's very good and he's a hell of a nice guy, very warm so. Then we have a street outreach program that goes and meets people out on the streets and supports them uh, and helps them get back into homes. Outreach could be out there at least once every week, I think. The first winter out in the tent, if you guys hadn't literally brought us out blankets and pillows, we probably would have froze to death because it was pretty bad two years ago. <laughs> We have Friends Place, which is a 40-bed overnight shelter for uh, men, women, and gender non-binary people. It is a good place for people who are struggling to come in, have shelter, have food, have a place to shower and lay your head. It's a good place for getting back on your feet. And then we have uh, two housing programs, Rapid Rehousing, which helps people working families uh, in particular, so they can get into a home really quickly. Helps with those startup costs, you know, that can be quite expensive. She said, you know, now's the time. Uh, you've got all your information uh, in for the union at Crescent, so let's go there and, and get everything taken care of and signed so that you can get you a new place for you and your son. And, you know, I was all choked up. I couldn't hardly speak, you know. It was just an amazing thing to, you know, get that kind of support. And then when we have Crawford Homes, which is permanent supportive housing, which helps people who've been homeless for a long time uh, because of being disabled. So when I moved to Crawford, I realized that I had a bad problem and I wanted to change who I was. And I've been in recovery and, uh, I still have a job, but I'm part-time not on my job yet because I have the ear infection. And I'm, I'm only halfway there, but I'm still struggling that I'm going to make it because of Crawford and my caseworkers and everybody. Even when I was a little girl, I wanted to help the homeless. I didn't know I had to live it to be 
that you have to live it to know how people, how they, how they act. Wow. You know, you got to know the field of it. And just like you guys go to college. I went to college for homeless, I guess is what you call it. Because I know what they are and how they feel, and I don't judge them. I just want to say uh, thank you and God bless the Beacon and the Shalom Center for their continuous efforts to move forward in helping people. And if I can ever be a part of helping, no matter how small that part may play, then I'm available to volunteer my time to give back to what is given to me. I really love working at Beacon, and uh, the reason I love it is two core reasons. Is One is we just put compassion at the center and love at the center of everything we do. That's a word we don't talk about very much, but it's a really important word, and it's just, it's at the center of everything we do. And the second thing that I think is so important is we just have absolutely dedicated ourselves not just to managing homelessness, but to ending homelessness. Our goal, we're a solutions-driven organization. Our job is not just to provide a meal, but it's to get a person back home. And until a person's back home, we know our job isn't done.